we go um, from the beginning. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, um, I have been a simultaneous interpreter for the Oscars for over two decades. It's been a long time and uh, it is such a joy to be doing um, this uh, job. Um, I work with a team of producers, directors, commentators, and an interpretation partner. Uh, the two of us, um, you know, uh, work together. And usually I translate the female voices and uh, my partner translates the male voices, but that sometimes changes according to the situation. I will mention that um, uh, shortly. So uh, I will share with you today what I do to prepare for um, uh, interpreting at an award show. So here are a few things that I do. Uh, the first of all, and to me, one of the most important ones is I try to watch all the nominated movies. Sometimes I cannot watch them all, but I try my best, including documentaries and animations. And also, I try to learn about the characters' relevance in the movies and their names, too, because a lot of times during acceptance speeches, the actors or directors, they will mention the character and the character's name. So it's very important to be familiar uh, with that. Also, <laughs> watching Oscar-related shows, I do live in um, New York, and so I try to watch the talk shows and all the buzz about the Oscar or any other award, uh, award show for that matter. Um, I try to learn about the Oscar gossip, uh, which I love. <laughs> um, and also, we have to be aware of current events because these events may be referenced during the show. For example, the Me Too movement or some uh, actors uh, may uh, refer to uh, immigration issues during their speech, uh, speeches. Um, or other political issues. So it's very important to know and be mindful of the moment in history that uh, we are talking about. And as well, learn about the show-related feuds or controversies. For example, in 2015, we had the hashtag movement Oscars So White, which went on for a few years and uh, because of the lack of diversity uh, in the um, in the show you know or the nominations so uh, it's very important to be aware of that of what's going on so I try to do a lot of reading beforehand a lot of watching um, shows or podcasts and one of the very interesting things is uh, we research the correct pronunciation of movie titles, actors, directors' names, etc. For example, last year uh, we were thinking, is it Leonard Bernstein or Leonard Bernstein for the maestro, you know, the movie? Well, uh, the correct pronunciation is Lerner, Le Leonard, I'm sorry, Leonard Bernstein, but even during the show, uh, the presenters or actors and actresses, they can mispronounce that. So <laughs> we have to be careful. And who doesn't remember the faux pas by um, John Travolta when instead of saying Adina Menzel, he said Adele Dazim, you know, and he became a meme. <laughs> It was very, it was funny, but also disrespectful. You know, you have to learn the correct pronunciation of these names. And that's a job in itself. And sometimes not very easy because sometimes even here in the U.S., um, people mispronounce uh, names of singers, actors, you name it, because they don't know. Uh, and that happens here, too, on live TV. Okay, uh, I want to go to the next slide and let me see here what I'm doing that is not working. Okay, now, 
So what I mentioned, I do before the show, obviously. And I also, before the show, if the titles of the movies are, uh, are, uh, exist in Portuguese as an official title, then I have to learn that. So not only do I have to know the titles in English, but I have to know the, the Portuguese translation, which isn't always uh, uh, the, a literal translation. So um, what I use for that is the IMDb, um, Internet Movie Database, is a great source. However, uh, sometimes there is a translation there that we think it's official, but it's not. I, and I give you an example uh, in terms of TV series, the one ER in Brazil, uh, if you look, it says uh, plantão de emergência, but the usage, you know, the uh, people have uh, not used that translation. They say ER. So be careful of that. Um, be careful about that uh, when you look at the official translations. And also, there are translations that are uh, that apply to Portugal. You know, not necessarily to Brazil. The next uh, topic, I try to watch videos uh, to become familiar with the different accents of hosts, presenters, nominees. For example, Hugh Jackman was a host once. Uh, the comedian Wanda Sykes was a host once, and Ricky Gervais. You know, Ricky Gervais is a uh, uh, one that um, I have a lot of trouble with his accent, especially if he's not sober. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next uh, topic we have to be aware of gender issues and use the correct pronouns for artists that may appear on the show. And examples are Caitlyn Jenner, Laverne Cox, Elliot Page. So we have to be very careful and very sensitive about that. Um, also, like I said, I work with a team. I work. I have an interpretation partner, and I uh, also work with commentators and producers and directors for the show, the TV producers and the TV directors, I mean. So especially when we are translating the red carpet interviews, we have to decide beforehand how uh, the dynamics will be. For example, usually our host is a hostess, you know, um, and she interviews actors and actresses. A lot of times she will be interviewing an actress. So I talk with my uh, interpretation partner and we say, OK, if it's two women, I, I will do the hostess. You do the, the actress being interviewed. Of course, uh, that changes during the show, throughout the show, because during the show itself, we have sometimes two or three female presenters. And a lot of times, because of the jokes they, they tell and because of the timing of that, it's very, very, very fast. And to avoid talking over my partner, sometimes we decide, OK, if it's three men and three women that are presenters, we just keep um, I'll do the women, you do the man. Uh, and, and that's how it is for the sake of not talking over your partner, because even if you have a script in front of you, believe me, the presenters do not always follow the script. So we have to be very fast. Um, and talking about script, um, this is also work we do beforehand. We read and translate the script and it's thousands of revisions, you know. We get a script today, uh, and tomorrow we get pink revision. The day after tomorrow, we get gray revision. And a lot of times, these revisions um, only contain one word that changed, but not, not always. Sometimes a whole act is deleted, or they change the sequence of the awards. So, it is a very labor intensive uh, job, but we have to do it. And uh, also when translating, we're translating into Portuguese, which, which is usually a little, a little longer than English. So shorten the sentences. Of course, 
without affecting the quality of work. But for example, um, here in the U.S., uh, the actors, uh, the the the, the uh, screenwriters, they love to say, "Oh, and now we uh, we are going to present an amazing, an incredible, a phenomenal singer." So they use so many adjectives to present somebody. We don't need to do that, you know, especially because they speak very fast, and we have to keep up with them. You know, so shorten your sentences, again, without affecting the quality of your work. And that's one thing also I want to uh, mention. In the script, sometimes there will be expletives or crude remarks. And because we are doing it live on TV, uh, we have to check with the director of the show, the producer of the show, about whether or not it's appropriate to do uh, an exact translation of that, given the context, or or kind of soothe it a little bit, you know, um, try to do an euphemism because of our audience, you know, and because of uh, rules and regulations. Um, so, after you do all your research, you talk with your team, you read the script, you translate the script, then we have a general rehearsal with everybody present. And that's when we do a reading of the script. And it's extremely helpful to everybody to do the general rehearsal as it makes sense to do. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to see here. Okay. Still before and during um, during the award. Well, warm up your voice. We all do that. Uh, I usually have lozenges handy because sometimes when I have a break, I just put a lozenge in my mouth and that helps me uh, lubricate my throat, you know, and that helps me a lot. This is a very personal thing. Uh, some people like to have snacks handy. I don't usually like to eat during the show, but I do like to hydrate, drink lots of water. And then we go to the studio to do the mic check, which is also extremely important. Make sure that the sound technicians adjust your levels. Make sure you, you can hear your interpreting uh, interpretation partner very well. It's really important because, let's face it, it's a long night. And so we will have to be ready for, for that. Also, during the show, we have, you know, the headphones on and we, we can hear our producer, you know, even though we can't just talk back uh, to them because, you know, it's a live show. <laughs> so, uh, but we always check with them uh, for last minute changes in the sequence of awards, which I have mentioned before, or deleted acts. And, and that helps us a lot. We don't always have time to translate last minute revisions. So, you know, but that's the nature of the beast, <laughs> like we, we say it. Also, I have my computer handy for real-time info. Sometimes the producer will say, okay, guys, during the commercial break, instead of having a break, you will have to translate the following interview with so-and-so. And let's say um, we don't know who so-and-so is. Well, we just have our computer there. We check. Oh, okay, it's a producer of such-and-such such documentary. And that helps a lot, you know. The more information we have, the better uh, your work is. Um, and also, like I said before, teamwork. We, we have a very um, cohesive team. We exchange information beforehand. We say, oh, by the way, who do, you, who do you think the winner will be for best actress or best actor? Sometimes there is a very high probability that a certain actor will win and so uh, we can be prepared to translate what he or she may say and uh, also the next one 
you have to be ready for the unexpected and proceed with caution. Sometimes we have technical difficulty, difficulties during the broadcast, uh, or who doesn't remember the Will Smith and Chris Rock faux pas? You know, Chris Rock um, was a host in Will Smith. Uh, I think it was 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Will Smith went up the stage and slapped him silly, <laughs> like we say here. And nobody was expecting that. So you have to be silent. You have to wait for your producer to tell you how to proceed, you know, or some actors and actresses, when they go up to the, to the stage, they are inebriated. And they will just start rambling, you know, and, and we are there and we have to translate it. So be ready for anything because anything can happen during a live uh, show. And because of that, you speak only when it's your turn. Avoid talking over your partner. Uh, and for that matter, nonverbal communication is key. You know, you, I signal a lot to my partner and he does the same. And eye contact, that's very important. And so it's very important that we are both in the same uh, room, which we are. But that I've, I've worked before in a situation where my partner wasn't in the same room where I was for different circumstances. And that's very hard because the nonverbal communication is lost. And uh, always be mindful that mics may be hot, even though you have been told that they're not hot. Always be mindful of that because, in fact, <laughs> I have some horror stories about that when we thought that the mics were not on, but they were hot. And so refrain from making comments until after the show. Um, and then before, you know, we've I, I've uh, talked about the before um, before uh, topics. So then last but not least, breathe and go for it. You know, it's a live show. Just go for it. And <laughs> after the show, I am exhausted after each show. I am just exhausted, so rest. But also, as we, I'm sure all of us uh, do that, think about the do's and don'ts for next time, how you can improve, reevaluate, um, and reminisce about the fun moments, especially the ones pictured on the side, which is a commercial break. But as I said, Sometimes during a commercial break, um, uh, you know, in the U.S., we are translate. We may be translating the red carpet interviews that we didn't have an opportunity to translate before. So um, the they will show the the interview during the commercial break in the U.S. So sometimes you cannot um, rest and uh, relax during a commercial break. But um, I will uh, be translating with my partner, Robert Greathouse, the Oscars this coming uh, March 10th. It will be on TNT and uh, Max, which is uh, the old HBO Max, which is now Max. Um, and I just wanted to say to all of you, it is, yes, it is a lot of work, but it is also a nice rush, a nice thrill, and it's so much fun when you work with people that really care about their doing, about what they're doing. And I have had the fortune to do this for many, many years. And uh, yes, I may complain afterwards, like, "Oh, I'm so exhausted. I, I don't know about this. It's a lot of work, but it's so much fun." And I am very grateful. And I hope that uh, I was able to share with you some of the uh, aspects um, about the translation of award shows. I, I hope, you know, it, 
I can, I was able to contribute some. Uh, and I thank you very much for uh, your time. And uh, this is what I had for you, except for one more thing. Don't forget to go to the after party. <laughs> so usually our uh, production team after the show, we get together and we just have a little fun, well-deserved fun. Well, thank you so much. And if anybody has any questions, I'm here. <laughs>